God's grace, amen. unmerited favor, amen, amen. grace that is greater than all our sins. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are children, O oh Lord, come before your divine presence one more time. And we give you thanks, Lord, for Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, the one who has descended here on earth. O oh God, to purchase our pardon on Calvary's tree, God, giving his life for our life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God Almighty. We just thank you, Father, for your, your mercy, your grace that is renewed every morning, God. It is of your mercies that we are not consumed. For your compassions, Lord, fail not. They're new every morning. So every morning as you give us life, Lord, we can sing, Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, O Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Hallelujah, thy compassions, they fail not, O oh God, as thou have been, thou forever will be. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you this morning collectively as a church. We thank you for your children who are here today, O oh God. We pray that the Holy Spirit of God will anoint them one more time from the crown of their heads to the very sole of their feet, O oh God Almighty. And as your word go forward, O oh God, I pray Ah, Lord God, that it would go as a two-edged sword, my Father, and cut through all our hearts, my God, in the name of Jesus, so that as we leave from this place, oh God, our cups will be overflowing with joy today, and it will continue to resonate in our hearts, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray even now, oh God Almighty, that you'll touch me by your mighty spirit, oh God. Decrease me to the ground, Lord God Almighty, because I'm nothing unless, oh God, you touch me. Then I have power and authority as you have given me. I pray that your Holy Spirit, oh God, will just anoint me afresh. And let me speak, Lord, as you give me utterance. Speak through me to your children, oh Lord. Silence my voice, oh God. And let your voice be heard in the hearts of your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh, we pray. Grant us your divine peace, O Lord, and grant that today and always as you bless us, Lord, cause us to continue to be a blessing in the lives of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And God's children all agree and say, Amen and Amen and Amen. It's a beautiful day. It's such a beautiful day, and we give God thanks and praise for our lives. So much could have happened to us, but because of his grace and his mercy, we are here singing praises unto his holy name. The spoken word for today, true repentance brings deliverance. True repentance brings real deliverance. And when we are delivered, we are set free. We are set free when we are delivered. So when we repent to God, when we bring all, all to Him and turn from the sins that we have committed, God hears and delivers us. So, so repentance is a change of mind. And that's the reason why the devil is in a battle for the minds of God's people. He's in a battle. Now, repentance is a change of mind and it refers to regret or remorse accompanying a realization that wrong has been done. Yeah. We have been done, we have done something wrong. Repentance is the willful determination to turn from a life of sin and self-rule 
to a life ruled by God and live in his righteousness. Repentance can be said to have occurred when someone has been convicted of the reality of their personal sinfulness and rejects and renounces that life of sin and turn to God through Jesus Christ or oh Lord because this is not possible unless we are prompted by the Holy Spirit of God. Why we are there so long in this world doing all the things that we are doing because God is not ready for us yet. Don't think that he's not watching and he's not seeing us. He knows every step. He knows what we are doing but it's just that or time is not yet for God to capture us. Uh, Luke 13 verse 3 is the word of God says unless you repent you will all likewise perish. It's a thing that all God's children must repent. Yeah. Romans 3.23 says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So don't think we are not don't think that we are just here to do what we are doing and there's no nothing on our part that we should go to God and to ask God please forgive me. And every day we do something that is not right in the sight of God. And we can't judge and blame because listen every one of us fall into the same category. No one is better than the other. If you every sin is a sin in the sight of God. You may not commit adultery, but you do something. You may not curse somebody, but you do something. You may not hate, but you do something. You may not do this, but you do that. Yeah, everything is a sin in the sight of God. Why? Because God is a holy God. And he has the, the beauty with God is that he, he sees all the things that we are doing, but He's a merciful God. But, but, but one day, mercy will say no. It's not all the time we're going to do it. And we know what we're doing, but we continue to do it. One day we have to look in ourselves and say, you know what? Enough is enough. Let me change because I know what God requires of me. So let me change. I, I, I love Romans 7, 21 to 25 because it talks, Paul talks, he says, I find a law that evil is present with me. He said, the one who wills to do good, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my member, warring against my law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the flesh, the flesh is cursed. Galatians 5, 24 to 25, he says, and those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh. With his passions and desires. If we live in the spirit. Let us walk. You can't be in the spirit and in the flesh at the same time. And the flesh is only a moment in time. When you will run to a dead end. Because it takes you nowhere. The flesh gratifies the things of the world. And who is beyond all this? Is the devil in hell. He fights against you. He fights it. This strong man inside of you fights. You know the right thing to do, but all the things you know that is wrong, those are the things that you go after. And God is saying, enough is enough right now. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24. You know, one of the things we have to do is to Look at God. You have to come to know God. And the only way you can know him is through his word. You have to know this great God almighty who thunders, who fill up the entire universe. Jeremiah 23, 23 to 24, he says, Am I a God that hands at the Lord and at a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places that I shall 
shall not see him, said the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth? He fill up the entire universe. This is the God that we are worshiping. This is the God that we are supposed to worship. This is the God that we are supposed to have respect for his divine authority. Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24 again. He said, thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this. That he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord exercising love and kindness. Judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight. Amen. Says the Lord. So, so when you find yourself in your riches and glory in yourself. Remember Jeremiah 29, 23 to 24. Glory in the Lord. Not in riches. Because riches one day will depart. You yourself. We ourselves. Everyone is included. Will one day depart. And what become of the riches? God wants us to exercise the glory that he deserves. Glory to his awesome name. He is the God of loving kindness. Isn't he a God who loves? Yeah. Every day we can say God really loves me. Yeah. And not because we go through, you know, situations of life. Because sometimes people go through situations of life. And they claim, oh, I don't think God loves me. He loves us so much that it pleased him to send his only son to die for us. Always remember that. He is the God of judgment. And one day we all will fall under his judgment. He's a God of also righteousness in the earth. Don't value yourself on account of your wisdom, your strength, or your riches. To know God is to renounce all these. When you find yourself puffed up, that oh I have this, and, and sometimes we do that. We look at people and we say, oh that man is so awesomely great. He, he has riches, he has this. We look at celebrities and sometimes I see people like crying, falling down. Oh, but come on now, all the person you are to worship and glory in is God. Almighty, no one else is worthy of that. Hallelujah. And if you find yourself doing it, say, God, I repent. These are the things that we're going to repent about. That we do not give God the glory. All the glory. We tend to admire ourselves because of what we have. This is how we get self-absorbed. And we feel ourselves self-righteous and all the, th th this is where pride seeps in. And who is behind all of this? It's the devil. In, in fascinate you, let you feel good. And then what next you do? He assassinates you. So, so, so if you have come to this part in your life that God has rescued you from all of this. Romans 6 verse 1 to 2. It says, what then shall we say? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Not because God's grace and mercy is there. That we're going to continue. Oh, I, I, well, God will have mercy upon me. You know what is wrong? Keep your hands from doing it. Amen. Keep your mouth from saying it. Amen. Keep your body from getting entangled with it. What then shall we say? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? How can we do that? 2 Corinthians 5, 17 Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. When you're a new person in Christ, when you have repented, because as I mentioned when I opened, all of us must go to God in repentance. It doesn't matter who you are. You must because, listen, sometimes we say things that we should not say sometimes our own thoughts. Our own thoughts. So we need to repent. No one is beyond repentance. If you say you don't have to repent, that's high class ignorance. We need to repent each day.
day. And guess what? God is so faithful and just that he will do that for us. Unless we repent. Unless we repent, we will all perish. I do not want to go to hell. I do not want to be in a world that is filled with so much evil. I do not want to, to, to go through all the things that I'm going through. Had it might not been for God Almighty, we would not be able to stand. So I don't want to go down to the pits of hell and to suffer down there again. I must come to God. And we all must do that. Come to God and seek deliverance by repenting. 2 Peter 3, 9, the word of God said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's how God's mercy is extended to all his children. All we have to do is to seek him. Submit to him. As we sang this morning, we have wandered far away from God. Lord, we are coming home. This is what we have to do. Because this, uh, Jesus Christ can come at any time. And this is the frightening thing about it. He can return at any time. So God's people have to look into their lives and to do self-assessment. And to see what is going on, what we lack, what we are doing that is wrong. And turn to God, as the word said, Isaiah 55, 6-7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and on God. For he will abundantly pardon. Don't continue to be a slave for sin. Because the things that we indulge in, the, the behaviors and, and the things that we indulge in, we are a slave to those things. Sometimes, like I read this morning from Paul, sometimes you know the things that are wrong, but you still have this desire to do it, even though you know it's wrong. And the things that are good, you don't go after that. That's a slave. It's an addiction. Romans 6, 8, 6, Romans 6, 16 to 18 says, Do you now know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey? Whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness, but God be thanked that though you were slaves to sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. You're either slave to sin or you're a slave to the righteousness of God. And every child of God who has the, the only set goal is to live eternal life with God Almighty will commit yourself to be a slave to the righteousness of God. Do not let the devil have dominion over you. Do not let the devil tell you to do the things. That, that's the only thing that he will tell you. To do the things that are wrong. The things that God is displeased of. We can do it. We can frustrate. My God Almighty, the kingdom of darkness. We have the power to do it. Behold, I give you power, he says, to step on serpent. It's time for God's people to frustrate the devil. To let him know that I'm under the power of Almighty God. It's time for God's people to frustrate the devil. He's a loser. And when God is for us, who can be against us? All we have to do is to turn to God. Hallelujah. Turn to God and turn away from the world. Every time we speak that in 
Bible study, we taught that by ourselves that we cannot be conformed to the world because the devil controls things that are God is omnipresent. God is totally in control. We know that. But Satan also is in this world because the devil came down with a lot of malice and anger in him and his only way to is to capture God's people. So we have to turn from the world and turn to God. Romans 12, 1 to 2, and we read this all the time. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. We sang it this morning. Holy acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to those words. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be that you may prove what is that good and pleasant and perfect will of God. The world that we are to separate from is a whole evil system, and we know that it dominates society and is contrary to the ways of God. If God said to do this, the world will say to do that. And the world says that the things that the world will tell you to do is the things that Satan delights in. The world which we are supposed, we are not supposed to love, basically ignores God and operates by ungodly standards. And believers in Jesus Christ must refuse to be guided by the world's standards. Do not let the world tell you what to do. Follow God. Follow his word. Follow what God says to do. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do not follow the crowd. Sometimes we have to break loose from the crowd. You know, when you have repented and you have decided to follow Jesus, God is there watching over you. There are certain things that you have to break loose from. The things that you really love. When you're in the world, you have to hate those things. Some individuals, you have to separate from them. Some friends, people who don't know God, you may talk to them about God, and if they don't want to, and keep telling you all the things of the world, it's time for you to break loose. I God in heaven. This morning we read about David. And one of the things as I was preparing this is just how when you do not have self-control, Satan can abuse you. But when you have self-control, able to control your behavior. You know, when I was preparing this, I looked at Joseph. And I said, my God, you remember the story of Joseph? Ah, in Potiphar's house. And Potiphar's wife came after him three times. That's what the devil does. And God brought me to, to, to Matthew 4, 1 to 11, where Satan tried to manipulate Jesus. Take him up to this pinnacle. Turn yourself down. Turn stone into bread. Do all of this. This is what the devil does. But you have to exercise self-control, especially when you know that it's wrong. Joseph said to Paddy's wife, how could I go with you? Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> everything in this house, I'm in control except you because you are his wife. How could I leave and do such a thing and sin against my God? You have to think about that. Amen. And when we come to David, uh, a, king. a king over Israel, God anointed him as king and said, you're a man of my own heart. Jesus. And it came to a time war. War. Israel went out to war. Uriah, a man of high integrity, a soldier. He was a Hittite, which suggests that he might have been a foreign mercenary who had become a worshiper of Israel's God. David should have, my God Almighty, some respect. But, but now you see when 
some people are in authority. They can abuse their authority because whatever they want to do, people have to submit themselves. And that's why they're going to be responsible to Almighty God for these things that they're doing. They went out to battle. And instead he went out to battle. What he did? He stayed back in Jerusalem. Strike one. Strike two. He was in there and all of a sudden, oh, I must go on the roof of my house. Yeah. And he got up. That's the, what the devil does. <laughs> when you lay a back and have nothing to do, the, 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 the Satan will fill up your lap with problems. <laughs> hey, let me talk. <laughs> if you have nothing to do, the devil will give you work to do. Yes. So get yourself busy. Yes. Lay it down when he should be at war. With these dedicated soldiers. Or praying for them. For God to keep them. Not to kill them. Not to let them get killed. To save their lives. But him lay down in his bed. And then stretch. Go up on his roof. And when Satan said. Okay I have to provide somebody for you. Because you can't be on the roof alone. And what did he do? He provided Uriah's wife. Uriah's wife was on the roof bathing in the heat of the day. And when David saw her, oh my God, it's all but the flesh. Which needs to be cross a That's an anointed man of God. That is a person of 
God's own heart. But he has allowed the flesh to conquer him. So when he sent Uriah with the letter, of course, this honest man, not even think that David would have done something like that. Too. Now, you see, the thing again is that when we trust people too much, we can't be too trusting. <laughs> because, you know, people change. Like a lizard. You ever seen a lizard climbing a tree and when you go after them, they change their color to blend in with the type of tree that they're in. If it's a gray tree, they blend in gray. If it's a green tree, they blend in green with the color. This is how people are. You can't trust people. The only person you to trust is Almighty God because the word of God said, curse is the man that put trust in another man. Curse! Not me say it. It's the word of God. So it happened that it happened. It happened and uh, of course, Joab did what he was instructed to do. And Uriah was cut down, of course. And when word came to, to, to David, instead of sorrowing and so, he sent for Bathsheba to come to his house. Bring her in. Bring her home. Bring her home. Bring her home. But God's eyes were on him. And there are consequences. Even though God forgives, there are consequences. He's a God who saves and he's a God who delivers, but there are consequences. And when we do certain things sometimes, God will, we have to pay for what we have done sometimes. So God, what happened now? David thought that God was not watching him. The God whose eyes circulate the entire universe. That's why he penned all these psalms. Whither can I hit from your prison if I make my bed in hell? Psalm 139 tells it all. Because he has experienced the hands of God. So, so God sent Nathan. And Nathan came to him with a parable. Talking about this man, a rich man and a poor man. The poor man have one sheep and the rich man have all this flock. And then the, 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 the rich man desired to kill up sheep. And the man took the poor man's sheep and killed I mean, and David's passion got hot. And said, so the man who did this should be killed, should be murdered. Nathan said, that man is you. You are the man. You did it. And he started to tell him how God has anointed him and the things that God has put under his control. And how can you do this? David says, I have sinned against the Lord. You, you see, this is the passion of God. Sometimes I cannot understand the, God's mercy and grace. The vilest offender Hallelujah. can receive a pardon from Almighty God. It doesn't matter what you have done. You can come to him and he will pardon you. Look at what, what David did. This murder. He did murder. Leviticus 20 verse 10. With, a mother, with another man's wife he who commits adultery with his neighbor's wife the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death those were the words my God in heaven but I love Romans 9 14 to 16 he said what shall we say then is there unrighteousness with God certainly not for he says to Moses I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy and I will have compassion and whoever not of him who wills. Amen. Not of him who runs. But of God who shows mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's the God that we serve. Thank you, Lord. That's the God that we are supposed to adore. Because he looks at our shame. My God Almighty. And he has pity on us. Because sometimes we are helpless. Sometimes we are just in our ignorance. Sometimes we mean good. But the devil twists us. This man committed adultery, which the Bible, the word in Leviticus 20 verse 10 talks about. People who are responsible for this, they should go to the death penalty. He murdered. He's the one who did it. 
somebody he went to battle but he's the one who wrote the letter his hands penned the death sentence but God but God after David says I have sinned against the Lord Nathan said to him the Lord also has put away your sin you shall not die however because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also who is born to you shall surely die and then Nathan departed to his home David acknowledged his sinfulness and this is what all God's children you know we read this but we have to look at this and put it be guided why is the word of God here is to guide us to do the right thing. David acknowledged his sinfulness. He did not attempt to rationalize or to cover his sins or to make excuse for himself. And this is what a repent this is what repentance is all about. When we have sinned and we come to God, we don't want to tell God, you know, it's this person, let me do it. I did not want to do something like that, but you know, this one twists my arm or this one tell me this thing and I have to respond in this way. No, you just go to God for yourself and says, God, I have sinned. Confess. He knows what you did. God's eyes are all over this universe. But confess, tell him what you did. And God is merciful. He will say like David, he said to David, I've also put away your sin. Cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repentance. Deliverance by Almighty God. God accepted David's confession and extended divine forgiveness. And this is also evident in his grace and his mercy. As Lois said, David was deserving of death. But God's grace was greater than his sin as we sang this morning. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, marvelous grace. Grace that is greater than all our sins. This is the God that we, have, we serve. Isaiah 44 verse 22, he says, I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions and like a cloud your sins return to me for I have redeemed you have the Lord redeemed you have you confessed to God your sins has he forgiven yes he forgave you if you have confessed truly from the heart that's what it says True repentance brings deliver. It has to be from your heart. Some people are struggling with hate and they go to God. God, please forgive me. I hate this person. Forgive me, Lord. But God, see the heart. It's just the mouth talking. But the heart does not mean it. That's not, that's not true repentance. And it goes for everything else. When we go to God and ask God to forgive us for this or forgive us for that, and our hearts are not changed, then it's not going to happen. The devil will twist our arms again and take us right back to Israel, to, to, to Babylon. He'll take us back to Egypt. I mean, he'll take you back to the sea. 
sin, in other words. You have to be true to yourself. Let your yea be yea and your no be no. Say what you mean and you mean what you say. I love those words. Say what you mean because God already knows our hearts. And, and when God has done that, if we are sincere in our hearts, when we ask for him to forgive us, guess what? It no matter what we have done, people will see you as the same person. You can't change for some people. If you're a thief and you go to God and ask God to forgive you and God forgives you, guess what? People will always look at you. If you come to their home, they will lock up every room. They don't want you to go here. No, they'll follow you all over the place. Because they don't believe that you're transformed. But Romans 8, 31, 33 to 34, I'm, I, 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 it's good for us. Romans 8, 33 to 34, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So even though David did such heinous crime, God forgave him. But, but David has to now walk in repentance. Don't go back to double again. Serve God. And we can know that David changed his life. As we read in Psalm 51. One to four. And we can all read that. When we go home. But the one that I see here, he says, For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always. And he says, Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Because he was guilty. God saw him, but God redeemed him. He said, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with your generous spirits. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted to you. He said, deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed. Because his blood was on Uriah's death. Deliver me from blood guilt. O oh God, the God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of your right. That's a repentant song. He felt sorry. You can feel, so, you can see remorse. And you can see that he was sorry for what he did. But that's what the devil does. You act on impulse. And then when you realize that you have done wrong, it's too late. You have already dabbled in the sin but we thank God for his grace and his mercy he does not treat us as our sins deserve we read again of the the lost son that parable of the lost son and this young man young man maybe in his 20s Came to his father and says, Father, I need all my money, I need my inheritance, whatever you have for me. And the father says, okay, gave him everything. And he went away on a wild spending. And this is what happens to sometimes when Satan wants to assault you. What he does, he separates you. So he went away on a wild spending and the word he spent wildly. 
He has money. He was glorying in his money. Glorying in his inheritance. Instead of glorying in God. And the time came when everything went to nothing. Because that's what, when God, when you're, when you're pursuing life and God is not in it, you're going to end up in a dead end. So that's where he ended up, in a dead end. And then he got a job working on what the job does is to take care of swine. Pigs. Now, now, now for a Jewish person to be touching a swine, that was already... <laughs> because the Bible talks about it, that the swine, you can't touch it. It defiles. So, so now he went to, to feed. And not only did he went to feed, he was so hungry and he had nothing that he had to eat what the swine was eating. Oh my goodness gracious. This is what happened when we wander far away from God. The devil is going to assault us. So he came one day and he looked at himself and this is what happened. We can go out and we can do the same, but one day we're going to look into ourselves and do self-assessment. And this is what this young man did. He came, the Bible says, the word of God said, but when he came to himself, when he saw how foolish he was, when he saw that what he did did not make sense or it was wrong, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spear? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. That's repentance. He was showing remorse. He, he, he accepted culpability. He knows he was culpable. And he was, he was sorry for what he did. And he says, I will go back to my father and apologize and let him know that I did something wrong. And this is what God wants from all of us. Look in yourself and see that you're doing wrong. And come to him and say, Father, I have sinned. And the word of God said on his journey to the father, in a distance, the father saw him and opened his arms wide and not even wait till he came. The father ran. And this is what Jesus, this is what God does. He opened his arms wide to receive a sinner who comes home to him. He confessed. And when the father saw him, the father had compassion on him put his head on his shoulder, embrace him, my God. And the father now wanted to have a big ceremony, wanted to have a big party for him because the son who was lost have come home. Amen. Luke 15, 10, the word of God said, Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. One person but there was great rejoicing with the father and he had a very big ceremony. And the son who was there all the time behaving himself and doing what he had to do, he was furious. He didn't like that because he says, I'm here with you all the time and you have never given me a ring on my finger. You have never given me a robe. You have never had a party for me. And this man who went away using up all your money, came back and this is what you're doing for him. Father says, son, son, son. You're here with me all the time. Your brother was lost and now he was found. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see that's the grace of God and this this is a parable that demonstrated God's love for sinners he loves them and he forgives them you are lost you're strayed but now you come home I'm here to receive you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ so this is what God wants all his people to do Come home to him. 
Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. This is what God is doing. This is what he wants from all of us. And I will close with Micah 7, 18 to 19. The word of God said, Who is a God like you? Pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins in the depths of the sea. This is what God's grace is. The word said he does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. That cuts through my heart to know that we serve a God like this. How can we remain in our sinfulness? When God is waiting for us to come home. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and to his God. For he will abundantly pardon. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sins. And heal their land. That's the word of God. And this is a word for God's people. God's elect. Because we are the ones who have to take it throughout the ends of the earth. And to teach those who do not know. That we have a God like this. Who specializes in things that seem impossible. And who has the power. My God. All power is in his hands. He can forgive if he wants to forgive. Who he wants to forgive. No man can ask him what is he doing. He wants to forgive you. That's his business. He'll forgive you. No man can say you're too sinful. Don't forgive. God doesn't listen to that. When he convicts. No man can acquit. And when he acquits. No one can convict. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we give that God all the honor and all the praise. And we worship him. And we praise him for his worthy. Give us the power, Lord, we pray, to frustrate the darkness of this world. Give your children, Lord, the power to frustrate the kingdom of darkness so that the devil will flee from your children. My God Almighty, we pray today, Father, that you will accept our praise. And we pray, God, that is there anything in us that needs to be corrected? Even now, God, we pray as we submit collectively, submit ourselves to you, as we collectively as a church, Lord, we stand in the gap for each other. For those who are weak. Lift them up Lord. We stand here in the gap. And we pray God Almighty. That you will have compassion. And mercy be extended. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth. Oh God we thank you. That you are God who looks beyond our faults. And see our need. Helpless children. Bloom like a flower in the morning and in the evening we wither it. That's how frail and fragile we are God. Have mercy. Let your mercy God be extended upon your children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray. Spirit of the living God descend upon your children. Ignite fresh fire in all of us. Let your Holy Spirit ignite fresh fire in our hearts. Ignite fresh fire in our thoughts. Ignite fresh fire, Almighty God, in our motives. Ignite fresh fire in our behaviors. Ignite fresh fire, God, in every word that proceeds from our mouths. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, God. We thank you that it's of your mercies that we are not consumed. God Almighty, if it were not for your mercies, we see clearly that we would have been consumed by the devil in hell who have come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God, today, we thank you that your mercy fail not. They are new, your compassions fail not. They are new every morning. So as long as you give us life, we can sing, Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, our Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou have been, thou forever will be. You're an immutable God. You never change. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. All we have needed, Almighty God. All we have needed. Your gracious hand have provided. Great is your mercy. Splendid are uh, your mercies. Awesome. Good. Not deserving, but you give it to us anyway. We pray, God, that you'll help our frailties, help our weaknesses, cause your grace to be sufficient for us and your strength always to be made perfect. In our weaknesses, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Lord, for this day, and we thank you for your word, and we, we thank you for all your children today who came out to hear your word. May your light continue to shine in their dark areas of their lives. This world, oh God, is filled with darkness, but we thank you that your light is there to shine light on this path as we continue our journey to the promised land where there shall be peace. Peace, hallelujah. Peace in the valley. Peace on the mountain top. Peace in our hearts. Peace in our souls. God, we are longing for that peace that passes at all understanding. We are longing for that home, almighty God. Where the devil cannot penetrate. Help us, O oh Lord, to continue. Never to give up. When we fall, give us the strength to rise up and to stand. My God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give us the power and the strength to rise above. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Go before us, Lord. Make all the crooked pathways straight. Remove all the landmines and secret traps that are set for us by the devil. Render these, oh God, God, render them all useless so that your children can cross over in peace. Be behind us, Lord, to keep us covered always on your divine hedge of protection. Cause us, your children, to remain rooted and grounded in you. And be above us, O oh Lord, to refresh us with your divine Holy Spirit. These and everything we ask in no other name, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, or strength and our Redeemer and God's children will all agree and say, Amen and Amen.